So, good morning to all. Uh, we are very pleased to be here. This was our first productive semester uh, with Marathon. The last semester was our first productive uh, semester that we are used by Matterhorn. And for the next 20 minutes, I will show to you what we did and what we want to do. First of all, who I am. My name is Stefan Zvyarvopoulos. I am a PSP developer. And it's, this is very strange because this is a Java-based conference. I'm speaking here. And I am a member of the multimedia team in Computer Center. Computer Center is an IT service provider for our university. And I am responsible for our video portal, V.TV, Opencast and Gallicaster, installation and implementation, and our uh, one an official Moodle LMS. It's for Computer Center, it's only for internal use. So we, who, are, who are we? University of Erlangen and the multimedia team. The University of Erlangen has around uh, 3,700 uh, uh, students, around uh, 12,000 employees, five faculties, 46 departments, 600, uh, 40 professors, and 200 bu 250 buildings, and more than 200 lecture halls. The multimedia team, we are seven, uh, four of us are responsible for recording and editing. We have one developer, guess who? And uh, we have two ladies also for team, for team administration and project administration. And also, we have uh, every semester five, four to five student assistants for helping us capturing uh, the lectures. And all this team is uh, responsible for our video portal. We have more than uh, 40,000 uh, resources, in, including MP4 files, MP3 files, and PDFs. We are cooperating with our student, student of uh, the This is our official LMS, and it's not supported by the computer center. It's another institution that is, is responsible for this LMS. And we also uh, have uh, the iTunes University, this is our responsibility. So, I always uh, call it adventure because it's a, a little bit of adventure, how we capture without, mar with, without Opencast. So, first, the guy who is responsible for the recording is going to a room. We need around 5 to 30 minutes to go to the room. Then, we prepare, we set up the mobile camera, we set up the wireless microphones and the screen capture devices. Sometimes we are carrying some screen capture devices. We record. And then we are going back to our e-studio where we're editing all the stuff. And we are post-productive post -productive editing. In Final Cut Pro, we are using Final Cut Pro to create a certain layout and um, to copy files from our HD cameras to Final Cut Pro and then create a layout at the intro, outro. And then we export this file to our HPC folder. The HPC folder is a, a short name for High Performance Computing Department. We have a folder where we export the, all these files there. And then uh, they have some FFmpeg in the scripts, a two-pass FFmpeg uh, script that is transcoding our video file to different formats. And at the end, we are published the clip to our video portal. Easy. So this is around six to seven hours for one recording with waiting time. Most common problems are microphones. We have wireless microphones and the guy who's going to a room uh, with a camera needs also a, a wireless uh, receiver to get uh, the, the wireless signal, the wireless sound. And we have problems with camera setup. Sometimes where the guys are forgetting the SD card, so there is no SD card, they need to run back to the room again and get an SD card. We have problems with the screen capture devices <coughs> because uh, we need to plug in, we are using Epiphan boxes and you need to plug it before the signal goes to the beamer and sometimes there is a problem. There is also a tutorial in the video portal that's saying how we are going to use it without any problem. And the result is something like this. So you can see here the intro. So 
schönen guten Morgen, meine Damen und Herren. Heute ist wieder... Vorsicht. So, first. Two things here. Uh, I think first, we have a very shy student. No one is sitting in front of the class. Everyone is sitting in the back because they know that there is a recording. And the second thing is that we are creating a layout here. So we need the VGA signal here, the camera signal here, and also we create this background image with all the metadata here and our logo. And at the end of this video, yeah, of course, we have the, the outro video. And then came Opencast before one year ago. I started with some tests. And right now, we have a multiple server installation. We have four VMs. And in common, they have a Ubuntu server, 12.04. Um, we have private IP addresses, except our uh, also Engage node. We have a common uh, file storage, network file storage server. We have Nagios and Woolen monitoring. And also we have a central log stash with a central log host with log stash and Kibana. And in detail, more in detail, we have one admin node. Yeah, with these technical specifications. Also we have a MySQL DB server installed and Gallicaster dashboard. We have one engage node and two worker nodes. With eight gigabytes for worker nodes. We also have five Gallicaster machines. These are standard Fuji2, Esprimo, a big machine. And in, co in common, they have Ubuntu 12, Gallicaster 1.5, 1.4.1, and private IP addresses uh, with special uh, network ACLs. So this is a private and very closed uh, network, th and the, the capture regions are only be accessed by our servers, and our servers can only be accessed by our capture regions for security reasons. And also we have five MCAS. Uh, we have uh, three in production and two more to come this semester. And also they have private IP addresses. And we are not using our MCAS for our um, OpenCast workflow. I will explain to you later why. Um, and this is my story, an OpenCast adapter story. So we are uh, the last, sem the last uh, summer. I was still in test. We used OpenCast 1.4. We use the HT720 workflow. You can find it in the OpenCast docs um, in the internet from Osnabrück. We are used the default player. And also, we had file capture agents ready and set to go. So it was very perfect. Everything was working for the capture agents. And we are celebrating. But I didn't celebrate because is that what we want? No, we had some problems. So, the first problem was our publication channel. You know, we had our students or our admins, and they offer often wondering, okay, where can I go to view a clip or to edit a clip? So, we had our video portal, and also then came the Engage player. So, <coughs> two roads, so where they can go. And I said, yeah, okay, just remove the engage player. We can stay with our video portal. There was another idea with uh, iframe. And I said, no, no iframe, just remove the engage player. We can stick with our video portal. Why? Because we have our very best and unique feature for our video portal is that we can protect our courses and our clips and we can protect with a very um, custom manner because um, we can create a clip or a course, we can create a password, we are providing uh, the lecturer the password and then the password is using Elias course to create a new course with this password and then the users that are going to Elias, they can see um, an item in the course saying that this is a recording, they are hitting the link and they are redirecting to the video portal and then the, cor the, the course or the clip is open. And they can view the course and the clip, and they can only view the clip. They cannot download the clip. They cannot uh, use some download uh, program to download the clip because this is a temporary link and it's a fake link. And they can only view the, the clip from student only. And so they need a broad broadband connection. And uh, yeah, 
I think there is also uh, four four hours. I think uh, limit, and they have to log in again to the student. And we are already have some ACLs from our admins. It's we have XML feed links uh, for iTunes use, so it's working. And also we have statistics of our clips and courses. So uh, the capture agents are sending the files to nowhere, <laughs> but. Um, I said, okay, uh, we can do the same thing like we did with all our um, media packages from our mobile cameras and we can edit the clips. So this is a part of our uh, XML definition workflow in Matterhorn. I don't know if you can see it very good, maybe it's very small letters. So, but I have some explanation. So first we create the layout using the composite uh, work, uh, workflow operation handler. The, uh, the layout is uh, the layout you saw with 1280 to 720 with the camera and the VGA. And the other problem we had is that uh, the files that are, are coming from our capture agent, our Kali casters, can could not be imported to Final Cut Pro, so they are not they wasn't Final Cut Pro ready. If you get a clip from the Kali caster machine and import it using uh, we are using the H264G streamer, I think. And if you import this file to Final Cut Pro, you will get an error. So we needed to, to make it another step for Final Cut Pro with transcoding. And we needed to use only one workflow. So if the user changed profiles and used only VGA or only camera, then we need it because the previous, fa the previous step will fail. And then we needed another step to keep this file and make it available and make it for Final Cut Pro importing. And the final step is that we are archiving the delivery video files. So by default, uh, the Matterhorn does not archive uh, the delivery files. Archive only the, I think, <coughs> the, um, the source files and the trim files. So this is how our uh, media packages look like. See, we have at the end the composite 720 and the presenter. So at the end, Matterhorn outputs something like this. Can I play it? So we are using the, the composite uh, workflow operation handler. We are creating this layout and our bottleneck is the background picture. <laughs> we cannot import the background picture. That's why we need to download this file and edit to Final Cut Pro. Our other problem... Can I stop it? Our other problem was how the admins can access these files because we are using student assistants and the student assistants, we are saying to them, okay, we are saying to them, take a mobile camera, go to room, there is a Kali customer in there, just plug in the mobile camera, start recording, stop recording and come, come back to edit. But uh, it's very difficult for a student that is, uh, he studies our physics or something else <coughs> to say to them, <coughs> okay, uh, you need to go to the, I'll say admin, to, the, to our admin node, go to the archive stuff, and then hit the link there and download. <coughs> so we did, I wrote uh, a curl request to our REST API. So we have this search available uh, in our video portal. So I said to them, okay, go to the video portal, log in, and then do a Matterhorn search here. We are searching the REST API for the, the episode and based on the title, we get some results with the download link. So they download the file to the local computer. And this is how it looks after the editing. So the download, uh, this is an actual recording uh, used uh, in the video portal uh, with Matterhorn and also we have here, this is our, our room. It's our computer center and it's only for uh, private recordings and we have my German are terrible sorry. Out. 
from you. <laughs> um, yeah. We can start the recording with a Gali caster and then it outputs this layout. <coughs> So what is our workflow with this implementation and this kind of implementation? So we go to the room. We are prepared. We need to set only the mobile camera, the sound are coming, uh, the VGA signal also coming, so there is no problem with the signals. We record, of course. We go back to our eStudio, then the files are automatically uploaded to our uh, Matterhorn server. We are trimming the files in Matterhorn, and this is a step where you may wonder who is doing the trimming. So we have a very few hours, so usually I do the trimming or another stuff that I uh, saw some things from Matterhorn is doing the trimming. And also we have a trimming in the Final Cut Pro, so that's not a big problem. Our big problem is our recordings and our change of metadata. So we are rename the recordings. Because if you start a recording with a Gallicaster, you, you get a very uh, common name, like recording started, and then the date and the time. And we need to change to our actual recording so the, the users can then search from our video portal the metadata and download this file. So we search the video portal. We are post-productive, editing. We are download, downloading this file. Uh, we are copying the file. We add the background picture. We add the intro, outro. We export the files to the HPC folder. We are waiting for video transcoding. And we are publishing the clip to our video portal. So the total time is nine to 10 hours. And it's two or three hours more our, our traditional process. And now, yeah, you may wonder, what? If it's taking too long, too long, why are you using it, this, uh, this procedure? Well, we are using it. <laughs> and there are some um, plus and some minus with our workflow perspective. The plus, we are simplifying the capture process and it's far more reliable than our mobile screen capture devices. We are removing the publish to engage step in our workflow. So we have a, um, a relatively more faster workflow. We have one publication channel. We don't need to change any ACL list. We don't need to import anything. We don't need an iframe. We can uh, continue working as we did in the past. It's a higher it's a very high adoption from our system. There is no need for training uh, for a capture process or more training with Final Cut Pro because we also train them for the using the Final Cut Pro. We have less editing uh, in Final Cut Pro because we are creating the layout and then we don't, the, the admins or our guys uh, don't need to uh, resize and create this layout, just add the background picture and the intro outro. And also, because this is a, a temporary step, well, you can delete everything every semester. Because the, uh, the media files are always in our uh, capture agents. Of course, we delete them, I think, after one month. But also, our, the files are copied to our CDN server and to our video portal. So if there is any problem with the database, no problem. We can have a new smartphone installation every semester. The disadvantages. Time, of course. If you copy the files from, if you copy your files from the mobile camera directly to the Final Cut Pro, of course it's faster than waiting for Matterhorn to edit these files. <coughs> we are not using the Engage Player features like captions and slide change detections and so other stuff. And quality, of course. We have uh, multiple encodings, we have encode and opencast encodings, and we have also uh, our high performance computer department encodings. So our results from our first 
semester. We had seven to ten hours of uh, educational video from OpenCast produced every week. We did not uh, uh, have any automatic schedule recordings. That's meaning that uh, someone needs, uh, we have nine out of ten rooms, uh, the lecturers didn't start the recording, so we need at least one person for camera operation, either to go in the room with the camera or to remotely open a camera and handle the camera. The satisfaction level from our team and our students, does OpenCast help? Uh, 90% yes. I did a presentation in our department and they are looked around said with the 10, <laughs> with the 10%. Um, Sixty to 70% of our staff uh, are working or publish the record the next day. So we had the time that takes from Matterhorn to create this file and then edit the file. 70 to 80 percent of our open cast recordings include camera and signal and, and screen signal. And our next our next steps are and this is the last time I'm going to show you this workflow. So go to the room, prepare course, record course go back to the studio. Then we need to trim. In OpenCast, we can use intro outro for Matterhorn 2.0 with themes functionality. And we hope that we can add somewhere in our steps a background image for the user to add additional metadata from our background image. We can do um, video transcoding like the high performance compu computing department are doing. And then just select and publish the clip for video portal. So copy the media packets from Matterhorn uh, folder and copy it to our CDN server. Our next goals are, yeah, of course, I'd create the background picture by admins in our workflow using OpenCast 2.0 with new admin UI and of course increase the number of our capture agents. That was very fast, I think. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, who created uh, your uh, media publishing system, your Fault TV? Did you or is it correct? Our video, pro our video yes, portal. Yes, your video portal. Uh, this is a, a PHP, um, it's based on a PHP framework. And uh, I did not create, it's a very old, uh, to say, for our web standards. It's six years old, but uh, it's a custom developed. And also our plugin for Ilias is custom developed. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, you said you copy the files then from Matterhorn. I said you copy them to the your uh, portal to your distribution. Portal. Yeah. Uh, did you create like an own distribution channel for that in Matterhorn, or is this still a manual step? A manual step. Because what I do is I, I wrote I have a distribution channel for for Elias that pushes the data into Elias directly. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we could have a look together what you need, what we need. Of course, we are not perfect. And uh, our main responsibility is the video portal. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, Matterhorn is another burden I have to carry. And uh, that's why I am here. I am open to suggestions. And of course, there are very steps to improve this workflow. And our main goal is our bottleneck is, of course, as I said, uh, the background image. Of course, we can create a layout with only a camera and a VGA signal, but okay, you can uh, tell it to my team leader because he always wants to do that way. I said, what's the problem? We can create a layout with only right 
uh, writes the VGA and left a bigger cover and said, no, no, we need also the background picture. And I said, okay, fine. Then we can do it more manually. And for the automatic title generation, I would also be happy yes. if we can sit together and find a solution because uh, I need to create like a standard <coughs> slide yeah, of course. With, with metadata. Of course. Um, <laughs> and as I said, I am a PHP developer. That's why I'm not helping too much uh, in, the, in the channel. And uh, when I, I go to my, we have a Java developer in our uh, computer center. And when I go to them and say, uh, I need a I need uh, an advice, or I have a problem with Matterhorn, can you solve it please, or have a look, and say, it's a very big code base, I cannot help you, sorry. I need one month to read the code. And I said, uh, okay. Yes? Any other questions? Too many information? <laughs> then, thank you very much. <laughs>